Well, we're going to talk about pickleball today, the game with the funny name. And I've got my paddle right here. This is what a pickleball looks like. It's like an old wiffle ball, if you remember. And joining us today is uh, Randy Footy, who's the regional manager with Lay Cold Sports Surfaces. But more importantly than that, Randy has uh, been heavily involved with the American Sports Builders Association in creating and leading the development of their pickleball courts, a construction and maintenance manual, which is about to go into second edition, huh, Randy? It's that popular? That's correct. Yeah, we launched the first one about three years ago, and we've uh, uh, added to this one, especially yeah. as the board has grown and developed. Great. Uh, well, you know, we're going to talk about some of the basics, uh, but frankly, you should just buy the buy the book. It's what at thirty bucks or so, and uh, and uh, we're going to give you the basics because if you're not put if you're doing multifamily and you're not thinking about putting pickleball courts in, you are really out of line because I, this thing is what, what do we got? What are you up to? 2.5 million players, Randy, something like that. Maybe three. At least maybe yeah. three. Million. Yeah. Yeah. It's really going. So let's talk about some of the basics of, of the design of a pickleball court, Randy. Uh, how big are these things? So minimally what we recommend is a court that is no smaller than 30 foot wide by 60 foot long mm -hmm. and a little tight, especially as the games become, uh, you know, much more multi, much more dynamic. Yeah, uh, competitive. The recommendation size is actually 34 by 64 to give folks yeah. room to go get the ball. Right. Uh, you know, uh, this is not a game for just old folks like me. Uh, there, there are some tremendously competitive players. I mean, there's a, there's a tournament that attracts about almost a thousand people every year. Uh, and uh, through the USA Pickleball Association, that's, I mean, incredible level of, of play, but I've seen, I've seen great play just in, in neighborhood play and the school kids are doing it. They take it for a, uh, they take it for a gym course. So it's, it's really becoming popular. So 34 by 64, uh, you, you've got, you know, this thing gets knocked around. You've got to put some fencing in. Uh, what, what are some of the parameters of fencing? You know, for the most part, because the ball doesn't bounce as high, let's say as a tennis ball, you can put in a shorter fence. Mm -hmm. uh, seen folks put in four foot, five foot tall fences. I think the standard in a commercial application is probably eight foot tall. Eight but foot? No okay. Fence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And give yourself enough room around the court. Yeah. So you can really probably, you can almost get two pickleball courts in for what you would do for a tennis court, right? A little yeah, bit, a little bit more. Actually, you can get four and the, and the original uh, movement of building pickleball courts was to take underutilized tennis courts and either repaint them or, or reline them. Yeah, but now we're now we're building fresh in for the most part. If absolutely. we absolutely right, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, water drainage, huge yeah. problem. Yeah, water is not our friend. Uh, <laughs> Every builder uh, knows that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's the enemy of the of the of the of the pickleball court, the hard pickleball court. Um, so I think, and it's probably the first thing that gets cut out of planning because drainage is expensive. Uh -huh. So uh, you know, you'll put a master plan into your community, uh, your county, and uh, and you'll get that priced out, and you'll go, oh my goodness, how much is this drainage going to cost me? Why do I need that? If you don't have it, the water's going to get underneath of your court and, and it's going to start to deteriorate the court. And so you're making right. investments, spend a little bit of money to cut the water off at the high side of the court and, and control it at the low side of the court. So if you're an apartment or condo developer, you want to not, not be cheap on that, on that aspect of it. Okay. Yeah, if you can help it. Yeah. Yeah. And North South orientation is best. Absolutely. The club I play at here in Charlottesville, Virginia, to save a little money and to add a couple extra courts, they put them in east-west. And for morning play and afternoon play, it is horrible. You're looking yeah. right at the sun. Yeah. Or, or Don't do that. Sun. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, uh, there's different kinds of surfaces that you can have. Uh, yeah. I, I guess there's at least three different kinds of surfaces. And what are you trying to, what are those surfaces and what are you trying to achieve in terms of the surface? Yeah. So for acrylic courts, hard tennis courts or hard pickleball courts in this case, what we're looking for is a surface that 
combines player comfort with performance. So the ball mm-hmm. to bounce at a certain height. You have to have a good footing uh, and interaction with the shoe and the court. But what we found is, is by adding rubber uh, layers or rubber granules into the paint coatings, we can actually make the court softer and still give the ball bounce that the player wants from a playability standpoint. So mm-hmm. you gain comfort while maintaining playability. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a balancing act there between comfort and, and uh, how the ball bounces uh, in terms of That's the correct. fun of the play. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. I think budget certainly has a lot to do with it. Right? Yeah. What are we, what are we talking about on cost, Randy? It's like pricing a car, right? Yeah. Okay. You can get a car in the marketplace. Let's talk, for let's talk range. Let's talk range and ballpark. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, for the most part, a single pickleball court, uh, it's going to be in the twenty-five to thirty-five thousand dollar range, right? Uh, but I've seen courts that are hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on earthworks, drainage, lighting, oh. uh, uh, all kind of crazy things that people will do. So okay, yeah, and we didn't talk about lighting. Do you recommend lighting? Uh, what's what do you think about lighting? I think it's great, especially as folks are working more. Uh, and families are working more. If you have lighting, you can obviously play at night. So you extend your, 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 your usable time for that court from whatever, seven in the morning till maybe 10 or 11 at night. Yeah. Any LEDs? What, what, uh, what, what, what do you recommend in terms of the fixtures yeah. and so forth? Market has all gone to LED now. Uh, yeah. There's still metal halide and some other things, but they, they, they're not as cost effective in the long run and they don't produce as good a light to play under. Uh, the the halide stone versus the, the LED. halide stone. That's yeah, correct. Right, yeah. Right. yeah. If I was doing it now, I would go LED, no doubt. Yeah. Okay. Good advice. Uh, have you come across any particular problems with building codes or ordinances or anything like that? In Not any so any of no. Not so much. I don't think it's any different than building a basketball court or tennis court or whatever it might be. Okay. The biggest issue that we see with pickleball is the noise. Yeah. And and, and there are some products out in the market that are what we would call uh, sound blankets. They actually hang on the fences and they dampen or contain the sound to some extent. So there's okay. manufacturers out there that are making those products. Okay. And then you can think about throwing in some extras like uh, um, shading, maybe some trees and so forth. Uh, yeah maybe a water fountain, but I don't know if you do that anymore. And uh, <laughs> one thing that is important, and particularly if you're in a senior setting, uh, would be a defibrillator, I would guess. Yeah, we, we certainly recommend a, an AED uh, on the courts or very near the courts. Uh, water access, you got to make sure that you're, you're handicap accessible. Um, and, and the sport is changing, you know, mm-hmm. like, uh, you're seeing it played all the time and more often. So Oh, shade is a valuable one. You know, I, needs I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell my listeners here, my viewers here. If you haven't played this game, you are missing. This is a fun game. It's, and yeah. you can learn it. You can be playing in 20 minutes. You yeah. really can. And yeah, not well, played, but uh, you'll you'll have a lot of fun. Now, yeah. okay, Randy, I'm going to take us out. Are you ready for this? Here All comes right. the challenge. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Randy Footy. Been great to talk to you. And get the uh, ASBA's pickle cor- pickleball courts, a construction maintenance volume, volume two. It's a great. It's a really good guide. There you go. Thanks a lot. Yes. Nice to talk to you, Randy. All right. Thank you so much. You take care. Okay, we've got a little extra bonus for you today. Uh, we're going to show you a little little trick that uh, a guy named Johnny Storm does. All right, but anybody can do this with a with a pickleball power. You know that, that's kind of easy. Okay, the trick is, can you do it on the edge like this? Oh my God, how many times can you do it? It's, it's really hard. Most people can only do about six at the best. You have to practice.
192. 192?